Hi students, today we shall see the next point of this chapter, system calls. So what is a system call? The interface between a process and an operating system is provided by the system call. In general, system calls are available as assembly language instructions. You know what are assembly language instructions. System calls are usually made when a process in user mode requires access to a resource. In the previous lectures, we had discussed about privileged instructions. So privileged instructions are those instructions which are executed by the operating system only. So as you can see in the diagram, the processes execute normally in the user mode. So suppose the user process requires an instruction to be executed which is in which is a privileged instruction then the user process have to give a system call so the system call interrupts this then the system call is executed on the priority basis in the monitor mode so when the system call has to be executed the operating system has to shift from the user mode to the monitor mode the operating system will then execute the system call give you the output and then will return back to the user mode after the execution of the system call the control returns to the user mode and execution of user processes can be resumed a system call is a mechanism that provides the interface between a process and the operating system. It is a programmatic method in which a computer program requests a service from the kernel of the operating system. Kernel is nothing but the programs of the operating system. System calls offers the services of the operating system to the user programs through API. What are API? API is nothing but application programming interface. A system call is a way for programs to interact with the operating system. Next we shall see the different types of system calls. There are mainly five types of system calls. Process control, file management, device management, information maintenance, communication. As you will be able to recall that these five system calls relate to the five different services provided by the system calls. Now we shall see each system call in detail. So the first system call is process control. These system calls deal with processes such as process creation, process termination, etc. A running program needs to be able to halt its execution either normally or abnormally. If the system call is made to terminate the currently running program abnormally or if the program runs into a problem and causes an error trap, a dump of memory is sometimes taken and an error message is generated. The dump is returned to disk and may be examined by a debugger to determine the cause of the problem. A process or job executing one program may want to load and execute another program. So some of the examples of process control system calls are create process, exit process, wait for signal object, fork, exit and wait. Next. The main functions of process control system calls and an abort a process, load and execute, create process and terminate process, wait and signed event, allocate and free memory. Next, the second type of system call, file management. These system calls are responsible for file manipulation such as creating a file, reading a file, writing into a file. We need to able to create and delete files. System calls require name of the file and perhaps 
some of the file attributes. So as you can recall in the first year file handling C programming we have to give the file name and the mode in which we want to open a file. If we want to read from a file we use the R mode. If we want to write to a file we use the W mode. So in this case system calls also requires the name of the file and perhaps some of the file attributes. Once the file is created we need to open it and use it. We may also read, write or reposition. We need to close the file indicating that we are no longer using it. We need same sets of operation for directories if we have a directory structure for organizing files in the file system. In addition, for either files or directories, we need to be able to determine the values of various attributes and reset them if necessary. Some of the examples of file management system calls are create file, read file, write file, close handle, open, read, write, close. What are the main functions of file management system calls? Creating a file, deleting a file, opening and closing a file, reading and writing and repositioning, get and set file attributes. These same functions are related to directories also. So with file management system calls, we can also create a directory, delete a directory, open and close a directory and we can read and write into a directory. Next we'll move on to the third type of system call that is device management. These system calls are responsible for device manipulation such as reading from device buffers, writing into device buffers etc. A programming as it is running may need additional resources to proceed. Additional resources may be more memory, access to files and so on. If the resources are available, they are granted and control can be returned to the user program. Otherwise, the program will have to wait until sufficient resources are available. If there are multiple users of the system, we must first request the device to ensure exclusive use for it. So for example, if the user has to give a printout, it should request for the printer. If the printer is not being used by some other process, then the operating system will give you the printout for its exclusive use. After we are finished with the device, we must release it. So some of the system calls for device management are set console mode, read console, write console, read and write. So the main functions of device management system calls are request and release device, logically attach or detach devices, get and set device attributes. Next we'll see the information maintenance system calls. These system calls handle information and its transfer between the operating system and the user program. Most system have a system call to return the current time and date. Other system calls may return information about the system such as the number of current users, the version number of the operating system, the amount of free memory or disk space. So when you right click and you go on the properties of any folder or drive, you will be able to see this information. This information we will get from the information maintenance system call. The operating system keeps information about all its processes and there are system calls to access this information. So the different types of system calls or the examples of system calls are get current process ID, set timer, sleep, get PID and alarm. So the main functions of information maintenance system calls are get or set time and date, get process and device attributes. Next we will see the last type of system call that is communications. These system calls are useful for inter-process communication. 
they also deal with creating and deleting a communication connection the get host id and get process id system calls these identifiers are then passed to the general purpose open and close calls provided by the file system or to specific open connection and close connection system calls depending on the system's model of communication the recipient's process usually must give its permission for communication to take place with an accept connection call the source of the communication is known as the client and the receiving known is known as the server then exchange messages by the close connection call terminates the communication some of the examples of system calls are create pipe create file mapping map view of file pipe shm get m map the main functions of communication system calls are creating deleting communication connections sending receiving messages help operating to transfer status information attach or detach remote devices so this is all about the different types of system calls next we'll move on to system call implementation so as we have seen in c and c++ there is a function call for these functions we pass parameters in the same way when the user process or the operating system has to implement a system call it has to pass parameters common rules for passing parameters to system calls are first parameter should be pushed or popped off the stack by the operating system last year you have learned about the data structure stack where we can push in and pop out the values same ways when we want to implement the system call parameters will be pushed and popped out of the stack by the operating system second method is parameters can be passed in registers registers is nothing but the hardware component in the motherboard so if there are less number of parameters we can directly store these parameters onto this registers and the last method that is the third method when there are more parameters than registers it should be stored in a block and the block address should be passed as a parameter to a register so as you can see in a diagram suppose if we want to implement system call number 13 and this system call number 13 we have to pass more parameters or number of parameters then these num different parameters will be stored in a table and the address of the table suppose the address of the table is x the address of the table will be stored in the register so when the system call will be implemented by the operating system x will be passed as the parameter what is x x is nothing but the address of the table in which all the parameters are stored so we will load the address x in the register x and when the system call is implemented it will take the value x go to the memory and take the different values use parameters from table x and execute the system call so i hope you have understood the three methods of system call implementation thank you